opens its interior of a very pristine, very organized, and very busy military imperial ship. Uh, the crew knows this to be the Manticore, uh, ISB agent uh, Captain Lynn Chimera's flagship. <clears throat> Last we saw our heroes, they were on Dantooine, surrounded, outgunned, hands in the air. This time we see shots of Remy, Bruto, Triz, and RC in cells, in holding cells. The ship is in hyperspace, heading towards an unknown destination. It has been probably the better part of a day since you guys have left Dantooine. You guys are fairly wounded still. Whatever damage you took from the ambush that went pretty sour. But uh, ultimately, you guys still have your lives for however long that might be. All right, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> give Kathy here a d6. I'm going to have each one of you roll that. Uh... This is for an unknown reason. I would... Uh, there is no mechanical <laughs> difference. Um, however, there is a very much thematic difference between rolling low and rolling high. Uh, uh, do you guys want me to tell you what you no. hope to roll, or you just want to roll, <laughs> roll it? I want to know. Two. Two. Is that good? I don't know. Is that bad? I'm right ah. Because whatever Wait. it is, I'll probably hit really bad on the most high scale. version. I got a one. Okay. Is that good or is that bad? A total of three. Five. Okay, that's a total of eight. Now let me see it. I don't know if that's good or not. Well, not the same way you guys rolled, so. Okay. That makes it a total 13. of 13. Okay. We'll come back to that later. That's I got the number of vacation days we get from prison! <laughs> you guys get PTO. <laughs> <laughs> Considering Mar just... rolled high, high is probably on the bad side. <sighs> For us. Because that's. I only <laughs> rolled to screw you guys. Yep. It's just the number of torture <laughs> sessions we each get. So. You guys have been on this ship for some time. You've been fed. You've been properly cared for. Uh, your cells are very minimalist. Um, these Obviously, she doesn't have a ton of storage on her ship. It is very much a warship, first and foremost, and it is necessary. You can tell that everything on the ship has a function from the little that you've experienced. And what you, what little you've known of Chimera is that she is a very diligent person, considering it's been about eight months since this whole fiasco started, and she is still hot on your case, and now finally in your, uh, you're in her clutches. So as you guys are traveling, uh, she pulls kind of each one of you into a sort of makeshift interrogation room. It's not makeshift, it's functional, it's fully functional and built into the ship. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> Everything has a purpose. So she has a interrogation room complete with some more archaic devices that are used to elicit answers, whether they be truth or what she needs to hear. Who would like to go first for the interrogation? Now, this is just to start off the whole party. Uh, mm -hmm. This will not be the only party we have on this ship. Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> You're the the one-time <laughs> Remy chivalrous in the campaign. They come to the cell, and they're like, who's first for torture? And Remy's like, oh, she's our captain. First. She's a captain. <laughs> she's the one in charge. <laughs> who's in charge? She here? knows the most. Yeah. If anyone has answers, she does. <laughs> I just get paid to fly. I don't know what we're even doing here. <laughs> Look, man, I make minimum wage. <laughs> I, I totally I didn't, didn't rebel. <laughs> I'm still waiting for six months of back tape from a temple. <laughs> All right, Captain's right. up. Okay. <laughs> so she meets you. You're escorted in. Your hands are bound. You're set into a sort of interrogation chair. You can tell that it has minimalist kind of torture apparatus. -y. Apparat apparatus. I says. <laughs> It has a bunch of needles and crazy stuff that Han Solo, like, ah, ah, as the camera fades, you know? Um, so you are brought before um, this chair, and Chimera comes in after a few minutes. All right, so as you might remember, Captain Chimera is very young. Um, she's probably early 30s, if not mid 30s. Um, she is very, uh, she's very beautiful. She has her hair let down into red, kind of flowing curly hair. Um, she has piercing blue eyes and an ivory white ISB uniform with the markings of a captain. 
Um, although her rank, although she carries like an air of youthfulness around her, um, she is very stern and kind of dedicated. And she always she her friends tease her about her wretch, her resting bitch face. Um, so she kind of steps in and she she sees you and she goes, Triz. I suspect you might re- remember me, but if not, well, that's such a shame. I hope that we'll be able to get to know each other once again over the next few days. I'm sure you would. You're probably thinking to yourself, how did I get in this situation? Not really. Oh, well, perfect. You've already put some thought into the questions that I'm probably going to be asking you. Where's the droid? The what? We don't have too much time for games. You're more than welcome to play them. I've got all the time in the world. I've spent the last eight months looking for you. And now I have you. So the sooner you give up the droid, the, what's his name, V-0X, you guys might refer to him as Vox. See, now you're being specific. I am very specific. I don't, please don't pretend that you don't know who I'm talking about. I have several holographs that have you with him. From Corellia, from Hope's Light, even Dantooine. Then you should know that we haven't seen the droid in months. When was the last time you saw him? Probably about six months ago. And where did you last see him? What was he doing? Hanging out like he normally does. And why is Vox a him? How close are you with this droid? It's what he identifies at. So you're very close, even friends, as much as one can be a sentient, can be friends with something that runs program. He's a droid. Yes, well, he's certainly, I'd like, I think you think that he's your droid, when really you are mistaken. You see, he has something, we understand it to be a sort of map within himself that leads to something that, well, my supervisors are quite interested in. So the sooner you help me find this little droid, the sooner this whole mess can be, well, cleaned up. I'm sure you value your life. Am am I mistaken in believing that? No. Oh, I can see we're going to have some fun together. Don't we always? Alright, so I'm going to have you roll your very first discipline check against um, some of these power supplies activating. Alright. She's going to let electricity course through you. Tiny? Whoa. Um, you take your highest score and you upgrade the lowest score. So if you have a five rank in it, yeah. that means you have five dice total. Okay. And so then you're, it? yeah. So where where now where you have five ranks in discipline, the higher number indicates the dice and the lower number indicates the upgraded. So what is what is discipline based out of? Willpower. Willpower. So what's your willpower? Three. Okay, so you have two, three yellows. And you have three two yellows and green. two okay. greens now. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So this is going to just be a. Um, she can tell that you're one tough cookie. You're playing hard to crack. She's going to turn it up to three purples. I'm. I'm. Each one of these is going to have a red in the. Well, maybe not yet. Not yet. We're just. This is round we're one. We're starting out light. <laughs> of the rest of our lives. All right. So a single success. So you withstand the electricity. It does hurt. Um, and so normally I'll say that it would kind of take out so what we'll do is with these kind of tortures um, obviously I don't expect you guys to crack in a day right that's not <laughs> it's not kind of what we're building towards but um, I'm gonna make it reduce your strain threshold the longer you guys are subjected to this the more exhausted you become the more the less you're able to sustain so I'm going to say that your threshold goes down by two even with your success Now, if you succeed handedly, then you do a lot better, but um, 
she under she kind of has plans to break you slowly over time rather than race to the finish line. So um, she is going to return you back to your cell here in a little while. Is there any things that kind of resolve as you're being tortured? Or are you pretty much just silent? Silent. Okay. All right, she returns you, and then she pulls Remy aside, or she has Remy summoned to her. Uh, <clears throat> Captain, are you okay? <clears throat> what did they do to you? Nothing I can handle. I smell like burning hair. Are you okay? Wait, you're, you're Zabrak. <laughs> she has hair. She has hair. Oh, you male Zabrak have hair. Yeah. Are you okay? I've had better days. What, what can we expect? What is, what's going to happen? I'm just going to ask you about Fox. Is there any lasting words you want to leave them before they're separated? It's probably going to be tough, but I know that you can handle it. All right. Remy, you are brought into the room. <coughs> You're set up in the same kind of device. And uh, she turns to you. She goes, Do you prefer... Reminald or Remy? Uh, my friends call me Remy. Okay. But you can call me Reminald. Reminald. There's... I've been very excited to ask you about some things as of late. We have footage of you firing a speeder bike into a crowd how long have you been practicing domestic terrorism? Or I guess just terrorism? Mm, well, I joined the Imperial Academy when I was 18, so that's probably when I started. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. You know, protecting the galaxy from terrorists can be a lot of work, and some people just aren't cut out for it. Yeah, that's why I left. So I could try better. Well, you see, there's there's some concerns here because you're wanted for kidnapping, and well, poor T Lieutenant Governor Tomlin Bell wants wants his daughter back. How much? How many credits did you receive from the captain of the Night Rider for Bria's freedom? I didn't receive any. So you're not entirely sure. What she's talking about, you know that she boarded the Knight Rider. Mm -hmm. um, last time we got information, you found out that she was un she was missing and under suspicion of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it must be hard to be your friend, your Wookie companion back on the Death Star. He's gone. Your friend, the, the swoop bike racer that can't s seem to kick gambling, well, he's here now. You have a trail of sorts of friends that you've left behind or betrayed in your wake. I have some very fun things planned for us ahead. I hope that you look forward to them as much as I do. Now, we can avoid all of this. I just need to know where the droid is. Well, I mean, I would hate to miss out on something fun. Is it a party? Yes. Several of your friends will be invited. Perhaps even some of your crewmates. Would you like that? I mean... The more the merrier is what I always say. <coughs> a droid, you say. I'm... Assuming you're talking about Vox since he was the one on the billboard? Oh, yes. I have several images of you together if you'd like to deny knowing him. No, I know him. I haven't seen him in a long time, though. How long? Mm, last time I saw him, it was winter on Dantooine. And where did it go? Uh, Vox? Yes. Um... I don't really know. We, uh... Escaped from some crazy degenerate stormtroopers that were 
uh, practicing cannibalism. After that, we got separated. She and I haven't seen him since. Looks down at the data pad, kind of scrolling through some sort of notes that she has, mm -hmm. and then she keeps listening. Sorry. After that, I haven't seen him. Where did he go? Did he leave the planet, or is he still on Dantooine? We got separated. I can only imagine he left the planet. Um, by the time we made it back to uh, the spaceport, our ship was gone. Where did your ship go? Um, the magical land of candy. I don't know. The ship was gone. We weren't there when it left. That's interesting. I've heard conflicting reports of where the ship went. I mean, if you have any more information, I'd love to know. Yes, of I had some important Sorry, things on don't, that. Don't let, me, uh, don't let me withhold information from you. We're, we're working together, trying to find Vox. We're, I'm very concerned for its safety. You see, if it falls into the wrong hands, this thing, whatever you're protecting, is very likely to be exploited by the wrong people. I've got a question for you, if you don't, if you don't mind entertaining me. She reaches kind of into this uh, crate. She opens it and she pulls up the holocron. Mm -hmm. What is this device to you? It's something we found on Dantooine. Where did you find it? Uh, in a cave. It, it's just like a shiny rock. It looks cool. I took it. All right. At this point, she's just going to sharply zap you a little bit and try and catch you mm -hmm. off guard. So I'm going to have you uh, make a discipline check against uh, two purples and a black. Remy loves picking up shiny <laughs> objects. <laughs> Look at this cool uh, rock I found. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> no, that's going to be a fail. Okay. So. All right. So you, you have, have one advantage. One advantage. <laughs> All right. So... Um, you're more than welcome to come up with something for the, that's one advantage worthy. I would say two would, would be boost dice against further uh -huh. interrogation damage and stuff like that, but... Uh, I'm gonna just say, like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if we can find something to use that advantage on. It didn't well. mess up his hair. <laughs> <laughs> it made the back stand out a little bit, but then when you it do catch can't... a glimpse, you're like, Ah, oh, that looks pretty cool. Well, this could be, could be, this AB, could be a new this could be AB2's new hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid Star Wars naming conventions. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so she she kind of looks at it and she goes, "Well, I'm gonna have some individuals look at this and see if we can't find out more what it is. I have a pretty strong suspicion. I have this isn't my first, well, this isn't my first time out of the, you know." inner colonies, so we'll get back to this in a little while. Unless you have any information about it that you'd like to share with me. Um. Save me the trip, if you will. Save yourself the pain. I mean, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bit of a reputation, as does your crew. I'm sure that you won't disappoint. I'm here to impress. Perfect. We'll see about that party. I'll send you an RSVP. She returns you to yourself. Bruto. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 bars make me nervous. <laughs> Alright, so uh, she brings you in, straps you in, and she... So this is my first time seeing her. Yeah. So she is like... Tight imperial uniform and you know red hair. Extremely professional looking. Yeah. Resting bitch face, but that's okay. Beautiful, professional, deadly. Can I try to charm her? You may absolutely Bruno try. Because Bruno just finds her beautiful. You may absolutely try. <laughs> if this fails, it's going to fail spectacularly, though. It's, it's probably going fair to. Warning. I'm just going to make it um, three purples and a red. She has a presence of four, that's her job. <laughs> okay. One rank and cool because she smoked during uh, the academy. 
You also I get, get a boost. Are you, really, you were severely injured recently. I am very severely so injured. So that is going to in, include a setback because you are not charming I'm to look at. Very badly burned. You are not charming to look at at all. You're very hard I'm, on the eyes. I'm uh, Yeah, you, that's a second setback. <laughs> they all look the same. Thank you, sir. Can I have another? <laughs> you're good. You're good. I think that's all the setbacks okay, over I have by a you. Presence of two. two. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Are you gonna try? I'm gonna take a boost because I find her so beautiful that I'm really. That it's it's literal flirtation. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) this is genuine. This is genuine. I would like to marry her, sir. (laughs) She likes to use a destiny point. No, I'm good. Okay, (laughs) I'm fucked anyway. (laughs) Okay. So, what would you say if I told you (laughs) that I had succeeded? I'll be damned. You succeed. All right. Yeah. Dream Weaver. So you have one success and four, four threat. threat. Okay, yes. perfect. All right. So it's that imperial uniform. So yeah, the sentence that I was saying when you cut me off with "Can I charm her?" is she electrocutes you immediately. <laughs> However, um, what 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 flattering what very flattering thing do you say to her out the gate? You just bark. <laughs> you pink thing? Oh dear God! <laughs> I wear pants. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you ready for this? Yes. Uh, are you an angel? Oh my god. In Star Wars, I don't know if there's a better compliment. I don't know if there's a more flattering compliment in Star Wars. Yeah. And then she gets that Natalie Portman, like, what the fuck, kid face, right? You know I'm here to torture you, right? Yeah. And then you tell her a story about how the spacers used to talk about her in Hut Space. I was like, you, I've heard stories all across the galaxy. Spacers used to talk about angels. All right. <laughs> they said you'd never All right. see anything. So she quite she has beautiful. her hand on the button and she stops and she kind of laughs briefly and she goes, "I think, I think we'll get along just fine." I'm Bruto. Nice to meet you, Bruto. My name is Captain <coughs> Lynn Chimera. Unfortunately, can I call you Lynn? You may. Thank you, Lynn. You're just so gorgeous. I ship it. You what? <laughs> I ship it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal, Bruto. We can make our relationship one of <coughs> excitement, or we can make it one of danger. Now, you know, unfortunately, I mean, we met under very odd circumstances. Some would say that danger can be quite exciting. She electrocutes you. Ah! <laughs> I'm not even making a roll for it. That was just that was just a role play electrocution. So, here's the deal. We can become very good friends. Or we could become jilted. I'll let you decide. Lynn, I would really prefer to be friends. All you have to do is one simple thing. Oh, what's that? Tell me where the droid is. Oh, you're looking for a droid? I could build you any kind of droid you could possibly imagine. Take yes. all of your greatest fantasies. As you might have seen, my ship is very well stopped. I am in no shortage of droids in general. I am, however, looking for one in particular, one that you might be able to get me. I don't need use of your skills. I need Vox. Stated plainly. You really don't want him. He's, He's a real pain in the ass. Then why didn't you turn him over sooner? Because sometimes when you're working on a ship, you don't have any choice. You work under a captain. I, you're an Imperial. You, you, know, you understand the chain of command. I absolutely do. You get orders from above and you have to follow them. Then you can understand that my, super, my supervisors, my superiors, are quite vexed at this whole Vox situation. What do they even want him for? He has information that is dangerous to mercenaries, unlike yourself. Now I'm sure you're the most upstart and outstanding type of mercenaries, minus that little, well, murder spree you guys just went on on Dantooine. Have you heard, you have not heard the headlines, oh, this is very unfortunate, Bruto. You and your friends were responsible for the deaths of 22 individuals. When did this happen? During your attack on the Imperial Convoy. Twice as many injured. Several of those unlikely to recuperate. 
you and your captain and your friends took lives. For what? Looks as though you were stealing power cores of sorts. Was that worth 20, 30 lives? It wasn't supposed to go like that. How was it supposed to go? What were you stealing and why? I needed a power supply. For what? To get off that terrible, terrible world. Why were you on the world to begin with? Because that's where he sent us. That's all that damn droid had in him. It was Dantooine. A little shit-ass planet farming community. I don't know, maybe he was just after some corn or something. He was after a device. At least that's the best that we could tell. Now you went to Dantooine, following his lead. What did you find there? Well, we found out some really interesting things. Do tell. Well... Start with the most interesting and work your way down. This is a deception check before you even say another word. <laughs> <laughs> unless like, you're telling for brutal? unless you're telling me a, a uh, unless you're telling me about a hall crime because fuck these statues <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the statues were very much fuck these statues worthy yeah except for Sterling um, or except for Remy who might have actually who, wanted to said yeah, fuck, fuck, these, fuck statues. these statues <laughs> and the captain wanted to take one with her <laughs> yeah because it was uh, three times larger than normal do you think this would fit on the ship <laughs> No! Horizontally, maybe. You're yeah, like not measuring it. The choking yourself statues on the ship. You, you, we haven't even measured them yet. <laughs> we haven't even find the ship. Bruto, you've got an. Do you have that manual that tells how big the boarding ramp is? I don't like, need I'm the manual. I'm not checking my manuals to <laughs> see if we can fit here, it. Man. All right. Uh, okay. you so I'm assuming you're not telling her about the holocron. Probably not. Okay, then roll me a deception. And what is that's against discipline? Uh, yeah, I do believe. Okay. All right, so that's only going to be two reds and a purple. Yeah. Okay. Two, two reds and a purple. i take one of these for, like, electrocution. Okay, two, 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 two reds and a purple. Right. <laughs> We're going to frack them for Start speaking in Sim Simoleon or whatever their language is. <laughs> I have a lack of success with two threat. Okay. So you don't, you don't get terribly caught in your lie. But you don't pull it off. So you tell her about. I tell her about these wonderful cornfields that seem to grow all year round, even in the snow, which I don't even know because we weren't there. <laughs> um, I tell her about um, the corn in the whole corn cob they had in the bottle. So you just give her an earful of corn. <laughs> I bite. That wasn't even supposed to be a it's pun, canon. but it's so good. It's so good. How could it not be canon, though? I tell her about all those glorious, wonderful <laughs> sights to see on Dantooine. Perfect. Like um, Farmer Maggot's giant tractor. And... Alrighty. So she's going to basically... She she quickly grows disinterested in your stories. And she... Sights to see. Um, so she says... Um, she says, Bruto, you're... If... If we're going to start this friendship off on the right foot, you're certainly doing a bad job. Lying to your friends is not very nice. And it, this isn't even your first lie to me. Marco? You are beautiful. Don't listen to them. Marco. We can do this one of two ways. Now, I might have a gift for you soon, if you would like that. But I only want one thing in return. Now we're gonna see how interesting these stories are of, of corn in the cornfields and the bar with all the corn. As exciting as those are, we're gonna see if we can't make some more funs, some, some more intricate stories rise to the top when we have our next story time. We'll also see if your crew will be so responsive to you after they learn the truth. Well, 
Well, at least there is a silver lining in this. I'll get to see you again. Scene. <laughs> Alrighty. So. Are you? <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> so several days pass by, and uh, she doesn't press you guys for information. She lets you live in these prison cells for some Does that time. Heal my wounds. <laughs> so your wo- your wounds will heal slowly. Okay, we're gonna say over the course of. I'm not worried about wounds so much. We're not going to do like a strain game. I don't want to do mechanics bogged down, right? You guys are going to be locked up for days, weeks, however long. As good role players, we're going to use that as our mechanics. So don't worry about your wounds. Don't worry about your strain. Worry about surviving this. So she kind of brings you in, asks you the same kind of reasoning with questions and stuff like that. However, um, this time, she uh, she brings in a data pad. And she she starts out very briefly by saying, Are you ready to tell me where the droid is yet? I honestly have no idea. Oh. See, now, it's kind of interesting because a lot of reports put you with a larger crew size. Well, the droid, first of all, there are unconfirmed reports of a small indigenous creature that you guys stole from the lieutenant governor as well. I can't remember the species name, but he has... It's unconfirmed reports that his name is Cree Blick. Oh. Yes. And there's another... A sort of sex criminal of sorts. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, there's an inside joke for her. I wanted on 12 systems. Um, her name is Raoul Revar. An estranged crew member of sorts. It, did she not steal your ship from Dantooine? A week after you guys disappeared in the wilderness with your newfound companion? You know. She can't steal the ship because her name's on it, too. (laughs) She's technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. (laughs) Well, I have good news for you. You see, she brought the ship back to you. She brings up on the data pad display a live video feed of VAR in prison in a very nearly identical looking ship, possibly even this ship. She probably just took it out for a joy ride. We weren't using it. You're not even gonna thank me. That's so rude, you know. Why should I thank you? For bringing the whole gang back together. You already told me that she was on her way back to us, so really, we would have run into her anyways. Yes, well, I'm sure if you can't really tell me where the droid is, that she might have a more interesting story to tell. I have a sneaking suspicion that she might still remember me from our previous encounter. You know, I don't think she has the droid that you're looking for. The one that she left Dantooine with? If she had it, it would be here. Well, we'll see what she has to say about that. And as you return to your cell, there is someone in there waiting for you. Kind of sitting on their bed, the light's out, it's kind of very dark. You're escorted in, the door slams shut. And this person is kind of in this cloak of sorts, very unassuming, very basic, and he lowers his hood down. And it's been a long time since you've seen this man. He's a Zabrak. He's got a very distinct horn pattern on his head. He was one of your most hated people that you really just couldn't stand from Iridonia. His name is Zer Block. And many, many on Iridonia knew him to be your rival. 
he was the reason why you had to leave your planet in the first place, as he's kind of the one responsible for uncovering what you did out in the wilderness. And he rises. Triz. Well, look at you. He reaches to his side and he pulls out a vibra knife. Triz just kind of gives like a smirk. Okay. Roll me a vigilance check. Okay. No, there's no opposition. This is basically initiative. Oh, okay. You're about to have a knife fight. With, with, with no knife. With no knife. I will uh, say that uh, this is this is a point where you might have to worry. Advantage. You might have to worry about your um, hit points again. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things, but you are, we'll say that you only have two wounds at this point because it's been several days, okay? All right, and what is, um, well, he's not terribly quick to act. Okay, I take, I, from what I kind of heard, it sounds like you rolled fairly well. Yeah. What'd you get? I got one success, three advantages, and a triumph. Okay. Now, we've previously established that a triumph will allow you to do one maneuver before combat even officially begins. You will also have first initiative. So, right now you have no weapons. This room is incredibly tiny. It's going to be very much a melee or like a brawl sort of fight. Um, he has a vibro knife, and he, from what you remember, was fairly dangerous. What do you do? I would probably charge at him and try to take the knife. Okay. All right, so your maneuver is to charge at him. Mm -hmm. Your action will be to, um, we'll say basically uh, brawl, but it'll be like an increased difficulty to kind of disarm him. Mm -hmm. All righty, so it will be two purples, but I'm gonna make it a purple and a red. <laughs> and if you're not gonna use a destiny point, then I will. You're gonna upgrade it? Yep, unless you are. No. Okay. All right, you guys are at all light side. Mm -hmm. Thank God we need the force with us. <laughs> one success and one advantage. All right, so you do succeed. You, I'm going to say that you knock the knife free, um, at least out of his hands. What would you what would you like your advantage to be? That it kind of that it's far enough away from him that he can't grab it. Okay, back. so you're just gonna straight up fist fight him now? Yeah, okay. maybe I you know when it dropped. I How kind about of it slides under your bed? Sounds Perfect. Good. That way it's a real scramble for it. It's prison style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he is going to punch you back, and he rolls. Two yellows and a green. What is and then two purples. Two purples is a and yes, sir. Yep. So he is going to use his maneuver to kind of uh, aim his punches. So he's gonna give you just a stiff jab to the face. You don't have any defense or anything like that from your talents or anything, right? Uh, you can actually. There is a, a defensive stance, defensive stance that maneuver. is a maneuver. So you could do that if you wanted to, and that basically just gives you one setback. So essentially, you can either aim or go defensive stance. Um, now, you can do that as your maneuver if you want, making his attacks harder. Basically, just kind of getting your hands out, being ready to parry whatever he throws. And that is a free maneuver that you could do. Sure. <laughs> Unless you have anything better on your sheet. All right, roll on. Yeah. Ooh. This is not looking good. He was really hoping for that knife. Yep. So I have three failure, three advantage. Okay. So he throws a stiff jab, kind of knock it out of the, you know, you just kind of mm -hmm. slap it out of the way. Um, his three advantage, however, will be he uh, kind of, as you slap his arm away, he kind of gives you just one quick shot to the ribs. Doesn't hurt much, but it completely throws you off balance. So that's going to be a setback on your turn. And then... Um, yeah, that'll just be my that'll be my advantage. Is that you're kind of off balance when you counterattack him? Okay. All right. What would you like to do? I. Does your 
Does your talents or anything have anything cool for this? Because if not, we're probably just going to do a fist fight. No. Okay. Just go ahead and build your dice pool then. And I would probably recommend using force points to just try and end this quickly because if he gets the better hand, I mean, it's probably going to be pretty bad. Beat his face. Should so I upgrade that? Go for it. I mean, unless you guys have card. something you really want to do with all light side points. We escape. Win the game. <laughs> we escape and win. We win Star Wars. Turns out what Vox was looking for for the second clue was on the mana cord. It was <laughs> friendship all along. <laughs> and that's our campaign. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. All right, roll it. Uh, he does have... No, 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 He doesn't have any cool stuffs. I fail. Just one failure. Alrighty. And you're using your maneuver for the defensive stance? Because you didn't It's aim. either you aim or you defensive oh. stance. Defensive stance. I guess I okay. have defensive stance. I mean, unless you don't want to do defensive stance. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I'll do that. So if I aim, I get. Generally, I want you to aim before you roll. Yeah. Because you already saw your dice results. Yeah. yeah. No, so it's you can okay. aim or do defensive stance. I guess I defensive stance. Okay. Oh, but this next one, man. That's going to come right out. All right. He is going to, he is going to hit you um, this time. So it's uh, melee attacks are just brawn, right? Uh, it's a brawl skill. No, but your damage. Uh, punch uh, is two damage plus, or no, yeah, it is just. It's just, just your brawn. Okay. So he deals you five strain. Okay. And that does include your reduced strain threshold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is reduced by um, soak, but you don't have your armor, so it's just, just brawn. Yeah, so you have a brawn of three, so he only dealt you two strain damage. Now, obviously it would be fun to just kind of duke this out. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we'll do is maybe just like a competitive check and just kind of streamline it. I don't want me and Kathy just to roll for the next 15 minutes to see who wins a fist fight in a jail cell. <laughs> we could um, leave it to the force die. We could. Which would you prefer, to do an opposed check that's fairly balanced or roll a force die? I like the idea of the force die because it's just quicker, less mm -hmm. mess. But it's up to you. It. Okay. Alrighty. Roll it. Uh, you want lights. Okay. Light. light side, so you do get the better of him. You take a pretty good beating, but you knock him unconscious. What do you do when he's unconscious? Do you just leave him there? Do you kill him? Actually, I was going to say, can I get the knife and, like, just slit his throat? Yes, you may. So, like... Okay. Get the knife. What's one more to the count? <laughs> Alright. So you kill him. Um, and what does this guy mean to you? What does this kill mean to you? Um. He was obviously a rival at. Um, Iridonia? Yeah, Iridonia. But, little known fact, he was actually Triz's first love, but was rejected for Triz's only female friend at the time. Okay. Alright. Is that everything? I just said. <laughs> I, I didn't know you had more than that. Okay, so... So you're you, like your old crush that turned you down? So as you're, well, like... this was personal. There should have been a lot yeah. of boosts in those rolls. <laughs> <laughs> so as you kind of slit his throat, um, you kind of finish as blood light -like kind of splatters all over you, and you look up, and there's a, there's an Imperial, like, army corps. You know, the guys that are on the ships. They're not stormtroopers, but whatever. He just stuns you immediately after you finish killing this guy. You can still hear like the gurgling of blood um, seeping out as you you fall unconscious. All right, we'll come back to you. So you, you fall, you slip unconscious as this guy lays dying on In your my floor. arms. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. 
<laughs> so are we in individual cells or like group holding? Yeah, they're in individual well, cells solitary. that are fairly yeah. spaced out. You, you can probably talk to each other once in a while, but they're, they're designed to be very solitary kind of thing to kind of break you down a little bit more. All right, so the camera opens, and it's like back in the interrogation room. It's the back of the chair, but you see two Lekou, two blue Lekou coming off the corner or off the edges, and you see the door slide open and Chimera walk in. Uh, Jenny, would you like to come join us? Uh. All righty. Welcome back. Hey, welcome hey back. Hey, guys. Traitor. <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> All righty. So um, the camera rotates around. Var <laughs> sees Lynn Chimera, the stuff of nightmares, walk back in. Um, We've gone so long, we don't remember your name. <laughs> what's, what's your initial reaction? Uh... I mean, you've you've been under imperial escort and arrest for the last week or so. You've been yeah. transferring. Yeah. And you had no idea you were coming here, but here you are. I'm probably just like really pale in the face. Okay. And so quiet. The, so you turn from a blue to a sky blue. Yep. Kind of thing? Okay. <laughs> All right. So she she walks in and she goes, Var. Hi. Welcome, welcome to my ship. I just got done visiting yours. It's beautiful. I mean, it's rough around the edges, but it's got a certain panache. It's a little messy right now. It's incredibly messy. And also, Kreeblik's been on it for a while, so he helped. Make uh, it messy. Where is Kreeblik? That's a really good question. I don't really ever know. Is that a deception check? I think it is. No, <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> Okay, that's no, it's <laughs> I think I hear them once in a while, but then it just could be a bad like. It could be an infestation of rats. Uh, space know. rats. Space rats. Space rats. Yeah. Space rats. <laughs> if you draw a circle with chalk. Oh shit! Did you see a lot of circles on that ship? Sometimes he comes. They were incomplete because she doesn't know the complete summoning ritual. Yeah. God, I remember there was something. Yeah. So she she kind of cuts you off and she goes. You know, you've been very hard to track down, but the Huts were more than willing to sell you for your bounty after, I'm assuming, you ran your course with them. Yeah, they're not my greatest friends. No, the Huts are... they're gross, they're indigenous, they're slimy, they're disgusting. I won't disagree with But you, they have a sense for... justice, if you will. And here you are. So the Huts aren't all that bad. Sure. Now, I have a couple questions for you, as you might imagine. Uh, we can kind of skip to the most important one, which is, where is your friend? Where is Vox? I don't know. You don't? I honestly don't. Because you were the last one spotted with him. I was. And now he's just gone. He is. Oh, you see, that pains me because I know our last encounter together was very painful for you. And I would just, I would hate to see something similar happen. Unless you're more than happy to oblige. I'd rather not. Then tell me where the droid is. If the huts don't have him, I don't know. She's gonna like to kill you. <laughs> yep. So you're gonna, you're gonna roll for damage. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be bad. Pretty, pretty serious one, yep. Do I have any from being with huts or my week of... No, you're, you're, you're pretty good. Pretty okay. fresh. Okay, better than all of you gonna be right three now. purple. This is gonna be two purples and a red. Two purples and a red. And what is it against again? Uh, your discipline. <laughs> which is willpower and discipline. <laughs> not so good. You're not really a disciplined individual. <laughs> you're I have this, two willpower. Is this news to everyone? And nothing in I really discipline. thought this was your jam. Alright. You do have a setback. Of course I do. Um, you actually have two setback because yeah, it's Lynn Chimera. It's Chimera. Yep. We finally know her first name. Did we ever know I think she probably did no. a proper introduction. Probably. She's a very personable person. You know, she's mm. very... All right, roll it. She's an angel. She's an angel. <laughs> oh. Well, that's not good. Um. Nope, that doesn't get canceled out of that. That gets canceled nope. out of that. No, 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 you're no, the first no. one. I had it right the first time? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's been a while! We've lost panties and club panties. <laughs> so I have two failures and two disadvantages. Two threats. Two yep. threat. Okay, so that's not good. No. No, not good. <laughs> so you, you don't out? keep your composure, and um, somehow the serial shitter strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, he's been at large. <laughs> he must be an Imperial agent. He, he, something, something, but it's it's not good. It's the rogue pooper. My only hope is that she can smell it and doesn't oh like it. Oh my gosh. Right. If also, you have an advantage. It's, it's, oh, but she doesn't. She just has threats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So she's going to yeah, basically pooper. press briefly um, as you're getting electrocuted. She says. Why were you heading to Hut Space? I b- new place to go. Is that where the weapon is located? I don't know what weapon you're talking about. The weapon that Vox is leading you to. I don't know where it is. Then tell me where the droid is. I don't know. And all this know. pain will end. I honestly don't know. She turns up the volume and you fade to black. As I am just gonna pass yep. out at some point. <laughs> So you're unconscious, you're being dragged back to a new cell, and as you're being dragged through the ship, you're paraded in front of Bruto, Remy, Arcee, and Triz's cells. And uh, as we kind of see that the whole band is back together, but at what terrible cost, I think we're going to call that a session. So I just see, like, cups on the bars. Dead man walking! <laughs> that and RC in his hell- cell somewhere is like, He struck again. <laughs> he just shit somebody's pants. Somebody's pants don't go shitty. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you again next week for more Legacy of Ash. Alright, Star Wars. Previously on Legacy of Ash. We don't need to do a previously on today. Space popcorn! I know you said I get a bonus to that, but I heard something else. Oh, I get a boner. I get a boner for that. Is that burnt popcorn? Sprawling you. <laughs> what doesn't get you around? I, I, I have not found stuff that doesn't. Remy, you're reading your Bible. <laughs> yeah, Space King David is like talking about Space Bathsheba right now. <laughs> he totally space creeped on her over the space wall. She was taking a space shower. She was space bathing. Space bathing? <laughs> <laughs>